Okay, this is the last round or the last minute of uh, this is me versus Rory Foster, who's the British MMA champion. I'm a bit heavier and a bit older, but we're just playing around. So what is we're going to look at the last minute of the round, and then I'm going to break it down, and explain to you guys what we were going for, what I succeeded, and what I missed, and the thought process behind this. This is Stephen who's shouting out the uh, coaching tips for Rory here. Notice nobody's helping me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, let's have a breakdown and see exactly what happened. <coughs> going to start from here. That's the inside leg kick. So this is what we're setting it up with. Then I fake the same kick, only I go upstairs. Bam! There's the head kick. Rory brings his hand underneath, and he's going to come through, take my balance. I hop back, lock up the clinch. So on my left collar tie, my right hand's going to throw some punches. I'm going to go to the body, and then switch upstairs. Bang! That's the head shot. Rory uses his left hand to underhook. And what he's doing is reaching right back. He's doing a really good job here. He's keeping me turned to the side, which makes it hard for me to get dominant angle. So <clears throat> I can't square up, so I'm going to go for the headlock control. Can't get the overhook. He's too tight. So I switch to the headlock, and I step through. So what I'm going to be going for is the inner hooking throw technique. So my foot's on the inside here. There's the hook. <clears throat> I want to take him down. I'm going to go for an ankle pick technique by driving forward. So if you see my hand here, I'm going to try with this hand to grab his ankle. So that's the ankle pick. If I were to succeed in getting that, I'd flip him and get uh, top position. <clears throat> However, I miss. Rory sprawls back, putting his weight on top of me, attempting to get my back. So what do I do? I keep turning to my right, switch my hips out, which pulls him over my shoulder, and ends up in scarf position. <clears throat> this is not an ideal position for this kind of sparring, because Roy doesn't have a jacket for me to grab hold of. I'm just round his neck. So in practice, it's difficult to uh, hold someone for very long in this position. I'm going to use it, though, in order to set up some strikes with my left hand. So see how Rory's turned his hips. He's moved his feet around this way in order to escape. What am I doing? I'm going to turn, try and get the dominant angle back again to take away his escape, throw a couple of strikes. What I really want to do here is lock up his hand. So I'm going to try and bring my foot over the top. What that's going to do is going to trap his hand. So now he can't defend against punches from my left. We're just friendly sparring, so I'm just tapping. For real, I'll be trying to finish because I know he'll be able to escape out the back. He can't really defend the punches here because, look, his hand's trapped. He's trying to bring his arm up, but it's trapped. So what does he do? He tries to switch his hips out. This is the correct response. If he turns his hips this way, he'll be able to get out and get to my back. <clears throat> what Rory's trying to do here is trying to trap my hand from the inside in order to defend the strikes. But in practice, that's really difficult. He's better off just trying to escape. So this is what he does. Turns, bridges, and switches his hips. Nice. Here I know I've lost the position. Okay, so what Roy's going to try and do is get to my back. He's going to try and pop his head under and stand up and take my back. How do I prevent this? This is dangerous for me now because he can suplex or whatever when he's behind me. So my key is to take this hand and bring it right the way over to lock up an overhook. That's going to stop him getting the back. Here. Boom, that's the overhook. That's going to kill. He's trying to get around this way. <clears throat> my overhook's killed that. Notice also that I'm grabbing, going for wrist control, and putting my weight down this way. So it's going to keep this hand glued to the mat. Coupled with the overhook means rather than him getting my back, he ends up losing his balance over the top. There it is. He goes down. Okay. So what Rory does here, which is superb, see how he's trapping my foot. He uses his head to get position, and he stands up and drives me into the cage using this pressure here. Drives me in, postures up. So, 
I try and throw a few punches, but not really got any kind of space to do any damage, so these are fairly ineffective. Roy's going to look for the knee on the underhook side, because this is the one that would hurt into the ribs. Bang. So I know that's a problem, so I'm going to try and take that knee away by hooking with my foot to take his knee strike away. A couple of strikes just to be busy, but what I really need to do is get out. Rory's got me in the corner. I'm in trouble. So what I'm going to do is lower my hips, looking for my chance. Here it is. So I've sat back and locked his waist. I'm going down, and I've locked his waist in. Now I've got this, I can turn him and escape. Boom. There he goes. He's out. <clears throat> so, I'd be looking here to throw some knees, maybe knees up here. But Rory's too quick. What does he do? He changes level, immediately goes for the single leg. So he's got head pressure. He's going to be pulling my knee this way while driving his head this way. And that's going to lift my knee off the mat in order to throw me. I know that's a problem. So what do I do? I push his head down to prevent the takedown. And then cinch up the head and arm underneath here. I'm locking my wrist into his trachea here. I know there's 30 seconds left, so I decide to go for it. I sit down. <clears throat> In order to make this guillotine work, you have to sit and turn onto your side because I've got his arm underneath, so I'm going to turn to my side here. I really want my head as far as possible. Here I'm pretty much on his shoulder, which is the optimum angle for this. And all I have to do is rotate my wrist to get the finish. Rory knows this. He knows this really well. He knows all the counters. He's bringing his foot to free his leg, and he's going to try and roll over. This would escape, except that <clears throat> here I refuse to let go of his chin. So the key thing, even though he escapes, keep hold of the chin. That enables me to follow without letting go. I've still got the head and arm. I switch to more of a kind of a sprawl side position here and rotate. He can't quite escape. The wall's in the way, and there's the tap.